So <clears throat> I'm just out waiting for my wife to stop by and we're going to crunch the numbers. The final, what I believe will be the final time before the uh, divorce is final on Wednesday. Or we at least we sign off on everything. But isn't this weird? I'm hiking, just hiking across a field, just on a walkabout. Nothing special. And uh, there's a hole right here. <laughs> and well, I mean, it's pretty cool they got that there. I guess that's for the lawnmowers so that they don't go in. So I'll get the selfie camera on, but I kind of wanted to show you, you know, the, the weird stuff you see. I guess these are, this is like a flood ditch for hurricanes. Kind of, kind of goes on around to down there. So I suppose, because this, this is actually a berm. And if you look over here, it goes all the way around that way. And then what I wanted to see <clears throat> was, I, this is, this is what I love about Florida. You know, at least some areas are still agricultural. And uh, I mean, look at this. Uh, I'm just hiking across the flood ditch here, but look at that. That goes way on out there. So that's uh, that's a lot of land. Somebody, somebody's got some assets. Probably Bill Gates owns that. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it. He's been buying up all the agricultural land in the country. So, all right. Well, let's uh, let's get to the selfie video and. Uh, just wanted a quick talking video, a little politicking in this one, so if that turns you off, then uh, cut the video off right now. So the uh, first thing I wanted to talk about is, uh, well, I was just out uh, going around the neighborhood yesterday, and I went over to the, uh, the pickleball courts, because I'm, I'm hoping to get back into that when the time comes after I'm done helping my mom up in Virginia. And I... Uh, I just happened to have a conversation with the guy, and I was telling him about the, uh, the, the you know, the divorce and everything. And I said, I said, you know, I, I said, I think one of the causes was the uh, politics. I said, you know, because uh, my wife, you know, she's a huge Biden supporter, uh, you know, a huge Democrat, uh, loves open borders, uh, thinks that the whole world should move to the United States, uh, you know, and I'm of course against that. Uh, She's against the Second Amendment. I'm all for it, you know. So that's uh, so these were a huge divide in our marriage. But then he went off on a tangent. And I thought it was very interesting because it's true of me too. He says, you know, uh, he says, since you know, between Trump and Biden, he says, you know, I've lost, you know, Democratic friends. He says he because he says at least I thought they were friends, just because he says we can't even talk civilly to each other about politics and uh you know because you know if you're a marxist communist and don't believe in the constitution you know that's a huge divide and so i got to thinking about what that conversation because i've lost friends too you know i there was a few people i used to keep in touch with i've hiked with them you know always uh, hung out uh hell i've been been to one of their houses uh, he would invite me in and stuff we don't even talk no more they, uh, they hated the fact that I, I was a MAGA person and I uh, just thought I was crazy. You know, just like we think they're crazy. I mean, why, why would you be for what took place in Afghanistan? Hey, by the way, they just took down that uh, song. I, I wish I could know. I should know the name of the songwriter because I've listened to it 50 times, but I don't know if you've ever heard it. Got blood on my hands. Got blood on my So they're censoring him now on YouTube. Uh, I'm hoping he'll put it up on Rumble because... Sometimes at night, you know, right before I go to bed or, you know, just if I just listen to that song because I get, you know, almost had an anxiety attack after what took place in Afghanistan. I mean, never have we left people, Americans behind enemy lines, but the Democrats are all for that, man. I, you know, so that's why, you know, the world don't make much sense to me. Um, so I, I think it was the, uh, the political divide that uh, just, uh, you know, broke me and my wife up and, so now, you know, I'm getting a divorce and I've lost uh, friends, uh, you know, because I just, uh, I can't wrap my head around what they're all about. The other thing I wanted to talk about was, okay, so let's say I've lost friends, I've lost a wife because, you know, I believe in the U.S. Constitution. But, you know, you think about it, way back in 18, eight, you know, what is it, 1860? I can't remember the exact year that the Civil War started. But think about it, that was a huge divide in the country. And, uh, well, you know, the South was fighting for states' rights and slavery, and the 
the North was against it, and eventually hundreds of thousands of men lost their lives. So when Tim Poole gets on his channel and talks about are we heading for civil war, maybe so, because you know, I can't even I can't even talk to a Democrat anymore. You know, as soon as you start brazing up uh, topics like inflation or Afghanistan or uh, talking about anything, they walk away, man. They won't even discuss it with you. So maybe we are heading for civil war. Because uh, there's another thing. I mean, I, I'm wondering if we're going to have to split up as a nation for other reasons. Uh, you know, right now, the uh, Republican states are fortifying their elections. And of course, the Democrats are saying that that's voter suppression. No, man, it's just common sense stuff. If you got to present an ID to get beer and cigarettes, you know, you should have to put a, present an ID to get to vote, you know. But it, the, the Democrat Congress, they're pushing, they're pushing. I don't know if they're going to get that bill through. But what they're trying to do is tell all the states, you can't have voter ID. You got to, we're going to have a one shoe fit all states as far as voting goes. And that, uh, that could be the final straw, you know, because uh, that's when the states, I think, would say, nope, we're not going to obey that law. And, uh, and I don't know how the federal government's going to enforce it. You know, if a state says that you have to have a voter ID, I mean, what are they going to do? Send the FBI into the state capitol? Well, you, then, then, then think about that. Then the National Guard comes into play. And they throw the federalities out of the state and say, nope, we've got our own laws. We're not obeying your laws. Because, I mean, you had Democrat cities that said, you know, we're, we're going to be sanctuary cities, right? They didn't obey federal law. They said that all the illegal immigrants, you know, come to come to our city, which I'm glad they did. Because <laughs> they don't want them here in Florida, you know. Not that they're bad people or anything, but a lot of them are just a burden on society. They came here illegally. They can't... Well, some of them can provide, most of them can't provide for themselves, you know, so uh, we don't, I mean, I say we, I, don't, I think most Republicans in Florida don't want the illegal immigrants here, um, you know, unless they're refugees like the Cubans. I, I've met a lot of Cubans that are really great people uh, and uh, even some Puerto Ricans. I tell you, sometimes the Puerto Ricans are a little high strung for me, especially when I was in the military, but uh, you know, that's just the media stereotyping a little bit. So, there you go. That's my first talk. Well, that's funny as hell. <laughs> I'm listening to the radio. And the first thing I hear is Nancy Pelosi saying that they're suppressing the vote. They're suppressing the vote. We don't have fair elections. How can showing voter ID not be a fair election, you know? Oh, my goodness gracious. I tell you, the whole world's gone crazy. Uh, the next two topics... I wanted to brush on and we've brushed on these in the past but they just uh you know things keep a changing so the first one is the uh the, the virus and the reason i'm starting with that one is uh is i, I got a few reactions to people in, in a previous video when i said you know if you know anybody with omicron let me know i want to get it you know it's a natural immunity which uh, they will never discuss and maybe this video will be censored certainly won't be monetized the natural immunity is, is proven to be very effective against the virus, and I would rather get the Omicron than the Delta, because I think the Delta was a lot worse from what I can tell, uh, just watching the news. So that's, I uh, just wanted to clarify that, you know, but, uh, you know, but here's the, here's the other thing, is the tyranny that's going on, you know, in these Democrat states now, in some places, they're, they're requiring vaccine passports just to go into a restaurant or even eat outside of a restaurant. And of course, you know, they're still masking up in those states. Just cracks me up every time I see Biden and Nancy Pelosi sucking on their face diapers, you know. That's, uh, that does cheer me up, I can I tell you that right now. But, uh, so anyway, um, but you think about it, I mean, you know, slowly but surely they're wheedling away at your freedoms in, in some states. Uh, thank God, not in Florida, and not under the great leadership of DeSantis. But I mean, this is getting into the Second Amendment and why it's so important. And I don't—I know a lot of people don't follow the news, but if you look at what's going on in Australia, I, at one time in my life, I actually wanted to move to Australia and get a job 
because I thought it was just, it looked, you know, Crocodile Dundee, man. I thought it was a free and open uh, democracy. And, uh, but the, uh, I never quite understood why the, the Aussies gave up their guns. And, uh, but I mean, everybody still seemed happy. And I said, well, you know, if you want to live in a country where you don't have a Second Amendment, that's fine. You know, because uh, years ago, I'm pretty sure I'd have to check on this, but I think everybody did, was armed in Australia, but they just kind of rolled over and said, okay, take their guns. Well, now look at it. Now they've got concentration camps where they're sticking people because they, they say that, they, you know, they got even a hit, you know, of COVID. There's, and of course, that poor tennis player, he can't even play because they're saying he's unvaxxed, he's unclean. You know, I hope you see how they try to divide everything. You know, that's, uh, that's been a tactic that's been used for hundreds of years. Divide and conquer. Divide according to your race, like critical race theory. Divide according to your vaxxed versus unvaxxed status. You know, divide uh, according to, you know, whatever. Whatever the, oh, the next thing will be, who knows. And, uh, but getting back to the COVID thing, and that's why the Second Amendment is so important. Because uh, they really, well, I mean, it, it can get pretty tyrannical in this country because especially in the Democrat states where they're communists and just go along with whatever the government tells them to do. But, uh, yeah, but I think in the free states like Texas and Florida and Tennessee, I don't think we're going to put up with that garbage. At least I hope not. I'll certainly volunteer to fight alongside the National Guard. So, you know, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be honored to do it if, I, if it come, comes down to that. Hopefully not. Hopefully people get some sanity in their heads. But uh, anyway, that's, uh, I guess that's about it. I, I had something else on my brain about COVID. Uh, well, anyway, I think what's gonna happen, and this will be a wonderful thing with this Omicron going around, it looks like everybody's getting it. You know, I wonder if that's the hand of God, you know, reaching down to, to just put an end to this COVID, uh, you know, I say nightmare, it's, it, it's, the politicians made it a nightmare, only 1% of the people get really sick, and most of them have other problems, you know, so even, even if you got the Delta variant, you know, the likelihood, I mean, more people, well, I shouldn't say more people die from the flu, but I mean the flu, a lot of people die from the flu, you know, have for many years, we never did lockdowns, and flu passports, and stupid shit like that, so that's, uh, that was the next topic. So I got the next one, this will be the final one because I don't want this video to get too long and you know and, and I know on my channel, you know, some people say can't you just stick to the hiking, but I do divide it up into categories and I'll put this under news and politics so you don't ever have to watch it. You can just go into I stuck hiking in Florida, uh, hiking and biking in Florida, I think that's what it is. And that's just a category, you, you, you know how to do that, you can pick that category. A lot of people here don't have good bufflers in Florida. <laughs> Uh, Florida man, Florida man. I know what I was going to tell you is the uh, filibuster. Okay, and uh, I was going to get into you know why you got to pay attention to your, your politics uh, because it means so much to you. I mean, you know, you got the federal government, they spent us into oblivion. That's why you got inflation, people. It has nothing to do with the, the beef, uh, the big beef companies, but uh, and, the, and the importance of the filibuster. So if you went back in time, Chuck Schumer and the Democrats were fighting against the neocon uh, rhino Republicans to um, to keep the filibuster because they were in the minority. And, uh, they, you know, it's 50-50 in the Senate, but really they, they're in the majority in both houses right now. But so now, now that they're in, in the majority, they want to do away with the filibuster so that they could pass legislation uh, and not in a bipartisan way. Well, you know, People need to be calling their congressmen and saying, look, man, we we don't want this. I mean, filibuster's been around since the creation of the nation, I think. And, uh, you know, so if you're not paying attention and the Democrats get the get rid of the filibuster and they also uh, pass that voter uh, voter law that you've done, you know, you can do mail-in voting across the country, you know, that's a, you know why that is. I, I, you know, that, that, that's a lot of cheating right there, I can tell you that, without voter ID. So, uh, I guess that's just it for the video. I just wanted to say that you really got to pay attention, especially at a local level, you know. People are now looking at their school boards. Uh, they're looking at the local governments. People are getting involved. 
So uh, the ship is turning around a bit, but I still meet so many people who just don't even want to talk about it, don't want to watch any news whatsoever, don't want to pay attention, you know. And I understand, I was that way for many years, but I didn't think the country was all that bad, you know. I just basically uh, woke up, went to work, came home and, you know, maybe worked on something for a while and then watched TV and went to bed and got up the next day and did it all over again. I was more interested in my next vacation or my next camping trip than I was about what was going on in Washington, D.C. I'm sorry that I had to start paying attention so you can see the damage that the, the federal government was doing, you know, but you just felt powerless to stop it because all you had was rhinos. That's, remember, that means Republican in name only, which that means Democrat. And then you had Democrats. And so you really weren't getting representation. And I think that's changing now. We'll see in the next election, assuming we have a next election. I, I've been telling you, oh, this is the last topic. Oh, my God, this, this is the worst one. <clears throat> There's uh, been reports right now that uh, the Taliban have said they've got 100 suicide bombers that have crossed the southern border because it's wide open and they're ready to pull the trigger if we uh, threaten them in any way. That's, uh, that's bad news. And now Iran is saying the same thing, that they've sent people across the border. Uh, so I honestly think that we'll have a massive terrorist uh, incident. And the Democrats are going to use that to declare martial law, so we won't have a 2022 election. That's my prediction, at least for sure on the terrorist incident. You know, too many, too many uh, bad people have crossed that border now. So there's going to be, some, I mean, there's already bad stuff going on. Lots of murders. Uh, you know, hell, there was just a video today. A guy walked into a, uh, I, I maybe it was a 7-Eleven or something, and he you know, robbed the place, but it wasn't. There you go. Another Florida man. They uh, robbed the place, and then he he took stuff like he was going to leave, and then he just came back and he shot her, he shot her right in the head, point blank. It was on the video. I said, "Oh my God!" You know, I mean, these people are evil, man. When you do something like that, holy moly! All right, let's do the mantra: Freedom, oh freedom! Good to live in the free state of Florida, free Republican state of Florida. We have no vaccine mandates. No mask requirements and no lockdowns where we are free to come and do as we please under the great leadership of Governor DeSantis. And if you're a Democrat, go to California. You'd be welcome there. Go to um, New York. Uh, well, Illinois, that'd be a good place for you. Chicago. In fact, I was listening to a woman the other day. She was telling, telling another person how great Chicago is. I wouldn't want to be there, but uh, you can go. If you're a Democrat, you'll like it there. This is why I just sometimes just do a walkabout by by a road here. You know, you would never see that if you were driving by. I mean, it's private property, so obviously I can't walk over and show it to you, but what in the world, man? <laughs> Somebody must have built that a while back. And then you got this big old thing right here. I, I guess that's, I don't know. I don't know, I, I was gonna say it's part of the power, but the power lines are over here. Huh. I just saw that on my way back to the car. Thought it was interesting. I wanted to promote my uh, next video. I'm hoping to make it tomorrow if I'm feeling okay. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, I have problems, but uh, so we're heading back to the uh, the Withlacoochee Trail. I've already got the bicycle in the back of the Toyota Prius Prime, and uh, we're going to get the next leg of that journey. I'm hoping to go a little farther this time, and this time I'll make sure. <laughs> I'll make sure I got some money in there so that if I want to get some food, because I will be going through, um, well, I can't, I, it's not, uh, I can't remember the name of the town, but it's just down from where I'll be uh, getting, uh, getting on the trail. So I'm looking forward to that. Eventually, we're going to work our way to the really beautiful portions of the trail. Uh, I've been, at least I've been told, because it does go through uh, the uh, state forest, and I imagine that's going to be quite, uh, quite beautiful and uh, probably a very nice ride. So uh, anyway, but we'll get it all in, and then uh, and then from there, uh, I want to hit those two trails as a guy told me about. It's I uh, put it in the one in the comments on one of the or the description on one of the videos, and I'm gonna look those up and we'll hit those next. Uh, I think I got one more video at Sunny Hill to do because uh, I want to go to the second. The, there's the north parking area, and then there's one more parking area further south. Because uh, in order to get the whole trail in by the river, you know, there's that crossroad. I found the crossroad, 
and I'm hoping with the second parking area that the hike won't be anywhere near as far to get to that crossroad and then then you can get over to the river and I you know I'm looking at all this for, for mountain biking you know that's what I keep telling you is I always walk a trail before I uh, mountain bike it um, just to see if I can do it you know but that's what plus I, I like hiking as much as I do biking uh, probably more so uh, that's where we're heading next see another reason that I do walkabouts there's no no trespassing signs here, but what in the world did that used to be? <laughs> you know, maybe there was a house here and this, I don't know. I mean, that seems just kind of weird, whatever that is. And then I saw this little side road. So I just thought I'd walk down here a ways. There's no house at the end of it. So, but uh, this, this is how I have fun. I'm just waiting for my wife to come over at four o'clock. So I couldn't get out and do a real hike today. So that's why I just came over here and, you know, I just, Go to a place and just you know even if it's just a neighborhood i sometimes i just walk a walk around and look at houses not in my neighborhood and you know but in other neighborhoods uh, especially the um the, the uh farming areas you know out in the country you find some interesting stuff out there 